Okay. So we're going to start. And uh, welcome, welcome to Traumaterapeutisch Forum and um, to, to this uh, live gathering. And thank you, thank you for coming. And especially thank you to you, Elspeth, uh, for you to, to want to use your time with us today. Um, I am a Una Peterson and I uh, founded Trauma Telcoaches Forum. I started this uh, forum when uh, COVID came and actually it's, it was meant for people who, was, who are working with trauma in all sorts of educations that they have with them. And today we open it up for everybody because of the situation that is uh, in Europe and around uh, Ukraine. And we did that um, because we are so lucky to have you. Welcome, Elspeth Roberti. No. <laughs> but you wanted to, to share your knowledge and your experience with us with, because you have for many years worked with people uh, in uh, this crisis that we are in. My mouth is getting there. But anyway, <laughs> so I just want to very shortly uh, introduce you, uh, Elspeth, and this okay. is Elspeth Hoverty, and uh, you are a, a intercultural coach and resilience trainer, and you live in Switzerland. And uh, yeah, you have been trained in psychology and coaching and organizational development and trauma therapy, somatic experiencing, and in community resilience. And uh, yeah, Elspeth, you have spent many years um, as a war reporter in Latin America and in Ireland. And then you started to work in development, co cooperation and humanitarian aid in Central America and in Switzerland and in Pakistan. Right now, uh, Elspeth, you are sharing your focus or you are having your focus on supporting people in humanitarian crisis. And here comes also then the situation connected to Ukraine in your spotlight. So that was a little um, introduction. And again, welcome and welcome to everybody. And Elspeth, the floor is yours. Please go for it. Thank you very much, Ayuna. It's a great pleasure to meet you all and to be feeling a little bit up north in Europe. Um, I would like to share a presentation I put together four years ago when I was asked in Nicaragua to help a group of women to calm down to find strength again after a very political violent political crisis there so um, these days i've been asked by somatic experiencing international because somebody knew i think it was hillary who had seen my presentation and uh, i was asked if i could share i have i am a scp I have trained three years in somatic experiencing. I'm not a teacher of somatic experiencing, but I have like my own experience how these tools can help people to overcome very deep crises, very big emotions. So it's a great pleasure just to share this with you all. And uh, uh, if you like, I will send on the PowerPoint later. I understand I will do a presentation and then we can share some question and answer. I would love you to participate in the presentation, not just to look at it, but when it says, feel this, do this, if it's possible, so you can actually experience it. Okay, is there any questions to start with? I have one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's not a question, but I forgot to tell you all about the frame. And that is that we are, you are having your presentation around an hour, and then we have time to Q and A's afterwards. And of course, I wanted to all of you to remind you of that 
this recording is being uh, this gathering is being recorded and therefore when you go on and talk that will be recorded as well um yes and the recording we are trying to find a good way to share this uh if it's if the editing went goes well also as uh, elspeth also said um the presentation uh, i will receive i've got it already uh, from elspeth uh, as a pdf and if you're interested in having it then you have to you have a week to send me mail about that then i will give it to you back and that is a gift from elspeth so yeah that was just my what i forgot <laughs> so. okay so i have made a powerpoint because it's sometimes when we're in big stress we have problems listening we have problems understanding so that's why i follow a, um, a train of thought and then we can also share this later with each other I've chosen these beautiful lotus flowers because lotus flowers grow on mud and out of the mud something so beautiful can uh, grow. And this for me is the big hope we're all having these days. Then I would like to ask you to do something called self-assessment. I'm, I'm sure I don't have to tell you more about this, just on a scale of zero to ten just without sharing just for yourself make an assessment where am i more or less am i zero or am i in the 10 am i more in the green area or am i in the red area <clears throat> and for people who don't speak our language or not from our culture sometimes we can say if you were like a weather what condition would you be would it be raining inside of you or would there be storm just assess yourself. Because what is happening when we go through big, big emotions, we or fear and stress, there is a reaction. And we show extreme anxiety or vigilant on alert. Set swings between panic and depression, feeling crazy difficulties falling asleep or sleeping through the night, greater irritability, outburst of anger, changes in eating behavior, increased use of alcohol, drugs, painkiller, you know what I'm talking about, body aches, lacks of energy, problems remembering something that we happened a moment before, short-term memory loss, problem forming sentences or urgent talking, 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 instability to stay in the present moment. You, I think I don't have to explain it to you too much. So what helps people a lot of time is to say, if I feel insecure, if I feel afraid, if I'm anxious about a dangerous situation, I'm having a normal and an appropriate physical reaction to unusual situation because it's meant to make me running away or fight against it. That piece of information can already calm somebody down. Say, okay, your body is meant that you, you know, get a lot of strength to work or to carry things away. So that's, I always share that with my people. And I would like to invite you to a small presentation or meditation I have developed. Um, I will not share this with you so you can concentrate a little bit. And I invite you just to sit on the chair. And if you can, you can lean on the back. And just notice how you breathe. Not deep inhale or exhale, just notice, am I breathing deeply or shallow? Then feel your feet on the ground. 
sometimes when we say that to a client, they don't understand, feel the feet on the ground. But if I say, are the feet warm or cold? Most people can follow that. Or maybe you want to go like this with your toes and feel your socks. Or if you don't have socks, feel the floor. Is it wooden floor? Is it grass where you're standing on? Then you can go with your hands over to your knees if you like, see how round they are. And to your size. Maybe put one hand on the stomach and the other one on the back. And then you notice, oh, I'm actually three dimensional. There is something called a body I can hold. And you can put your hands like this. And take your hands as if you were washing them a little bit and feel how they are, warm or cold, dry or nice cream you put on. And maybe just think how grateful you are, all the things you have been doing today with your hands. Even so you were stressed, they were always there to help you. And now they're still here to help us a little bit to put my hands on the head and just like a rain in the summer, a warm, soft rain falling down this face opens up our mouths and it stays here on my collarbones a little bit. Now I invite you to look around where you are, just very calmly from one side to the other and see what colors do you see. I see orange, I see green, I see black, blue, orange again, Green, you can also go behind. Yellow, blue. And come back and see something else. Yellow, black, or blue. And then you can tell yourself, my name is in my case, it's Elspeth or Bhatti. I'm 67 years old. I'm in winter tour Switzerland. Today is the 10th of March. It is 7.20. It's the 10th of March, 2022. And then you can say, I have arrived. This exercise may help to bring people closer to realize where they are and that they can put attention to what you're going to say, maybe. I just wrote down a little bit of this so you can share it later. So what is it we're dealing with these days? We've just come out of a big pandemia and now we're going into a war in Europe, which we never thought, or at least I have never thought this would happen. <clears throat> so this provokes big emotions, uncertainty, fear, 
insecurity, frustration, anger, fear of the unknown. We also mourning for people who have died or had to run away, had to migrate. Sometimes we even mourning for a pet. We feel the loss of security, the loss of control, the loss of freedom, or maybe loss of jobs, no income, no more savings. That's very big emotions. And I won't go this too far, just a few ideas to say what happens with us in these big emotions. We have hormones coming in, the heart beats harder, the muscles and joints are on alert and ready for action. The breathing speeds up and so on and so on. And the digestion <clears throat> doesn't work really good. So we, if we do that for a long time, then it becomes, it makes us ill. So what we can do is find ways of getting out of this severe body reaction. <clears throat> At the same time, these fears, these big emotions make the prefrontal cortex to switch off. I'm talking here to bigger experts than myself. But it seems that then that's when the brainstem takes over the functions. We don't think. We go into fight, fight, or freeze mode. And we stop thinking. So we cannot go into any more to find our resources. So what we can explain to the people is that we're like wired systems. Our nervous system are wired two ways. One is called sympathetic and the other one is called parasympathetic. It's, I don't know where the sympathetic, for me, sympathetic was always a nice person. So I don't know where that comes from, but it, that is what it's called. And what you can notice is when you go into a warm bath, it's parasympathetic. Huh? It's like you laying down, you're feeling good, everything is relaxed. And then when you go into this stress mode, it's like being in a cold shower. Everything goes like this. The eyes go tight. You can explain that to the people. Everybody understands things like that. And then we can see that like every day we go a little bit sad or a bit, you know, on an ordinary day, our life goes always up and down. And this, when we are fine, this all goes up and down in something called a resilience zone or an okay zone. I'm, I'm maybe sad, I may be happy, a little bit dancing, a little bit, huh? but I'm still fine. What happens when we have these big emotions huh? or a war? Something happens and it overshoots. This is going either up and we are into um, irritable, we are into manic, we talk a lot. That's when we call it stuck in the high zone. Or we go below where it says sadness, uh, isolation, I can't anymore. Huh? I'm stuck in the low zone. So what is it we're trying to do with people who don't have lots of experience in somatic experiencing or whatever is to widen this zone, to make it possible that we can, um, uh, in Spanish you say aguantar, that we can take in more, huh? a little bit. We can widen this by doing a few exercises and by tapping into our resources. So I have here a series of training uh, exercises, which I won't be going through them all, but you know, you will know what I'm talking about, which is what we just did with the feet on the floor, or how do I breathe? Maybe you wanna go into this. This is Peter Levine. 
I think most of you who have a, a, who are practitioner of somatic experiencing know him. And he has a hold, which is to put your right hand on the, over your heart and underneath your armpit and then hug yourself. And just take a minute to feel how that feels. Usually what happens, you get a big sigh, which means we are going slowly into the warm bath. Hmm? This picture below is from the women in Nicaragua who were trying this out with me. This is also, I have included this exercise before, so you don't really need to do this now. We can also just touch the surface. It seems that only doing these small um, movements can connect us again to the prefrontal cortex or to feel, is it warm or cold where I'm sitting? Or hear, what sounds do, you, do I hear connecting with the five senses? Look around, that's what we did. Or count, you can have, if somebody's very excited, just count backwards. Yeah. And maybe just have to walk around, feel the feet, lay on a sofa and feel the heaviness, the gravity of where you're sitting. Leaning against the wall. Or we can do this butterfly. I don't know this very much, but lots of people just think this is very good. We can, okay, I see somebody doing it like this. I think this is somebody Gina Ross has come across. And the one I wanted to share with you again to participate is to sit and lift up your knee and then the other. It's a bit like running, running while sitting, huh? because it makes us feel running away from what is happening. We do the running. Until we got a little bit calmer. So now, I hope most of you have been able now to connect again to the thinking part of our brain. We know where we are. We know who we are. We feel a little bit less tense. And we can go back to where are our resources. From my experiences, I know there are different types of resources. One is external, it's more from the outside, like all our friends, family, social network. I don't mean social network on Facebook, but maybe as well. <laughs> but belonging to a community, most of us, we have like a neighborhood community or a work community. Contact with nature, as Basil van der Kolk says, we are all mammals and belong to the world. <laughs> so if we go to walking nature, uh, takes turn caring for the children. This is also a very nice way of, of having a resource. Then try to beneficial eating and sleeping habits. I mean, this is something very difficult to tell somebody who has not even enough to eat, but at least to be aware that we should find a way of eating as good as we can. Then the other thing is to move. This was also very important during COVID time that we should move. And if people are in a 
camp or if they have to hide, if they are in a shelter, they can still do sports on the place, like jump road, or um, we can do yoga moves. It doesn't really matter if we know it or not. Just move whatever you think comes best to you. Or if it's possible, we can put some earphones and dance, whatever. Or we can do some competition with the kids to dance or gymnastic, who will jump, just move around. This is very important. Then we have internal resources, like feeling and thoughts that give you relaxation, joy. What gave you joy in the past? What is supporting you now? Then try to find out what makes you feel secure. Sometimes we can also tap into what, when did, I, how did I go out of a situation I was in, a, a complicated situation? Or maybe it's the moment to ask your parents, your relatives, how did you go out of a difficult situation? What made you go more resilient? And then, of course, spirituality or religion all thoughts that would be good. And if you do that with people, just have them write down your internal resources. I'll take a moment so you can also reflect on that. What is your favorite internal resources? And then we have cultural resources. Huh? We can listen to music, make music, sing when this is possible, like for refugee camps, this is very, very useful. Not while on the shelling, of course, but when we are out of the most dangerous zone. And then also write down what is happening to me in these unreal times. Huh? What goes through my head? And sometimes we don't have to write long stories because not everybody can write well or doesn't feel like they can write well. Sometimes I recommend to write three things. What was the best thing today? What am I grateful for? And what did I learn? So you can have a diary just with these three things. Poetry, it seems that sometimes poet can express just with a sentence much more than people who write whole books. And somebody said to me, when you think you write poetry, it is poetry. So we don't have to think I'm a poet, but I can just write a few words that make me very happy or sad or whatever. And then art painting, like this painting here below is from Frida Kahlo. And most people might know it. And for me, it means I, my heart is with your heart or I feel what you feel, but maybe for somebody else, it means something else, but it's to express what you feel in this very moment. And not everybody can draw like this, but maybe you can, just draw lines that makes you happy. And then, of course, humor. I was, uh, I think it was Hillary who told me that. I didn't see it personally, but that the people in Ukraine put the, the directions around and paint them over so uh, that the Russians who will walk in will not find their way and still have, and that people have fun with that. So this is a very, very important resource, I think.
then if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to share this list of how to feel a little bit safer. I was told by Elaine Miller Caras, who is the community resilience teacher, I should never say how to feel safe. In these circumstances, we should say how to feel a little safer. Would you like to say something, Ayuna? No, okay. I So what, what can we do to make them feel a little bit safer? This orientation, which is the one um, exercise I just did, you might know other ones. We can then exchange a little bit. Perception, what do I feel? Where am I? What is going on? And that's also mindfulness is coming in. You know, what does it smell of? How is my body? All this is very, very important if you have time. And if there is no time, you tell them just to slow down. This is the most difficult thing you can do when you deal with people on very high stress. But you can find ways of saying, for example, I don't understand you. Or I can say, I'm a little bit too old, please. Explain it again to me. I have not understood. Yeah, just find a way of slowing people down. And then try that they don't have too many information. Like in, in Nicaragua, where I lived during the war, you had the radio going all day long with news. Blah, 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 blah. And on the background, there was always a sound going, wee, 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 wee. So whenever I still hear that, I immediately go into alert or I, I, I'm aware, right? So I tell people it's okay if you really are in a zone where you need to know every moment what is going on, but usually it's okay to watch twice, three times, maybe four times a day, but not all the time. Make sure you watch maybe eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, four or eight but not one hour before you go to bed, you should not watch news nor uh, be on the phone. That makes your nervous system even go more on alert. And also in the morning, if you have time, if you can do that, have breakfast first, then a shower or whatever, get dressed and then see the news when you have a coffee in front of you. I also recommend that for, to all of you right now. It makes a big difference to do your morning routine and then watch the news. And I know in the therapeutic circles, there have been now many people say, I don't watch news anymore. I don't know if that's good. We need to know a little bit what is going on. And then one difficult one is to know your limits. You know, you know, when you work, when you're with your family, what can I not take any more in these circumstances? Like I had a man in El Salvador, he said, after he heard this, that, to, that he should um, take space for himself, he created an idea that to say, when I sit on this chair, nobody talks to me, I'm not here. And he was like living in a big family in a small place. So he said, I managed the 10 minutes. Nobody was saying anything to me. And we know what 10 minutes of calm can mean, right? Also, reliability makes people feel safe. Like when Ayuna tells me, tonight at 7, you're on. And then she's there half an hour before telling me everything and everything is fine. I start to feel calm. And when I say, I pick you up, then I'll pick you up. And if I don't pick you up, I have to let you know. This is what people feel safe in hard circumstances. Or sometimes also to have a look at things that have not changed. Like this is also very important with Corona. A flower always had the same smell before, now. Eh? 
or what I know from, I got this information also from people who have been in prison, like they put them, political prisoner are put in the lowest, so they don't even see the sunrise. Because to see the sunrise every morning, you know there is another day. And it's, the sun has not changed at all. And maybe that goes for your coffee, or maybe your favorite blanket like Linus here. I, hope, I don't know, we're all about my age. A lot of them say that you have a reference to Linus. And funny enough, I never been quite such orderly person as during hectic times. It helps to be clean. It helps to spend some time cleaning up and have an order. So keep your room tidy and clean. That helps, even if, if it's in a camp. A camp, you can uh, help that people are a little bit cleaner. Just take a big, quick break to see if you can follow me, if everything is fine. You just go like this or like this. Okay, good. Yeah. Take a deep breath because there is a lot of emotional stuff in this. And then I will continue again. Okay. Anybody needs to say something very urgently? Wants to share something? Katrina, you, 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 you are yeah? reacting. Okay. Okay. Just go for it. Then just say something. You just have to un to unmute you because you muted. Okay. Yeah. I I just want to say spontaneously that it was a wonderful presentation you gave there because it made me feel that everything I have learned uh, comes totally together. There's only one thing I I would like you to that I was missing only one small okay. thing. Okay, it's not over, Katrina. I was just making a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but what was missing? I was thinking of prayers because a lot of people, for a lot of people, myself included, my prayers means a lot. Yeah. And I especially when I'm in the uh, difficult situation, then I pray. And I think a lot of people also in different cultures would love, would use their prayers, uh, even if they, it's war or whatever it is. Uh, I agree with you. I have put in spirituality and religion. Yes, yes, I saw, I saw. Yeah, yeah because I, I want to be careful of not offending yeah. anybody of because course. I don't know what what culture maybe you don't say praying no but yeah. you can pray to your grandmother or, <laughs> yeah. or your okay. mother or, or your god or your exactly yeah. yeah yeah thank you very much it's very important I know in Latin America everybody prays everybody yes in India everybody prays yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's a very, very big resource. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll continue. But thank you so much. Yeah. Let me just see how much time I still have a bit of time left. I just wanted to take a break because sometimes we cannot listen so much. And of course, you can add on a lot of other things, I'm sure. You have also worked to see what keeps people, makes them feel a little bit safer. And from the organizational development, I also know that clear structures, be it at home, be it in the organization, be it in the business, can help us to feel it's a little bit safer. Like if we have clearly defined task and work area in an organization or in the family, 
like you can choose who is doing what, when, that helps to make everybody feel a bit safer. That's why in camps of refugees, it helps to organize the people. It's very important that I belong to the people who do the floor or I belong to the people who get the water. It, it's very important. And if you can, to plan and discuss the daily structure, you can do that even when it's chaotic. You say, at eight we start. And at 12, we do that. And in the evening, we do that. And if it's not so chaotic, it all helps us to get through crisis. Or even a weekly structure. Now, we cannot think for months anymore since Corona, right? But we can maybe have a weekly structure because that's what Basil van der Kolk also said. We need something to look forward to. Like I can work the whole week when I think, oh, on Saturday, I will see Ayuna and have a great party with her. Yeah, so that's what weekly planning is all about. It's to have something to look forward to. Communication in organizations, or in even if you're just a small structure, it becomes very important to keep regular meetings to inform your staff of what we are doing or what everybody is doing. Because remember, when we're under stress, we forget, we get confused. We don't remember. It seems that we, don't, we can't even hear the same way. So when we give instructions, like for, for um, to go away, to run away, just check quickly that everybody has understood what we're gonna do. Just say, what is it we're gonna do, Ayuna? <laughs> right, we're gonna have a video call. Yeah, just make sure. And establish clear rules for communication. Who is in charge to communicate in this group on Facebook? Or are we, Everybody in charge, it's very important to have rules. Yeah, it doesn't have to be top down, but it has to make sure. And then just in that sense, remember under fear, we do not think, we do not hear so well, we do not listen. So just repeat again, be slow in giving instruction. And now this is all for you. Uh, before you start supporting others, important, attend yourself first. Uh, orient, do maybe this exercise I was doing with you. Be aware. First aid in the sense of first psychological aid, or to, are you hurt? Do, are you bleeding? Are you Just help yourself first. And then check in. How do I feel? What can I do to make me feel a little bit safer? And then when you go to the people, always inform what you're going to do and why. And the focus is always on the present, on the resources, and also gratitude seems to help a lot. To think at least I have a place to sleep. Instead of saying, I don't have this, I don't have running water, I don't. But I have somebody who was kind to me, who hold my hand today. That helps. Because what happens if we help too much? We are tired. Boredom is a bit of a funny word. It came out funny in the translation. I mean, it's not boring, but it's, you're tired. And we have an inability to feel oneself. We find difficult to empathize with other people. I don't know if you all know the word compassion fatigue. I learned that in Pakistan, everybody was tired from having attacks and this and that. And they just couldn't take it. They couldn't care anymore about other people sometimes. 
or secondary traumatic stress. When you constantly hear of people, like when you're a helper in Denmark and suddenly all these people coming in crying and I left, left my husband behind. These are all very big emotions. And then you also feel traumatic. Don't know if you know this, like uh, when you have compassion fatigue, when you're completely overwhelmed, be aware of these signs. You know, people start to drink a lot of alcohol or eat a lot. I was a war correspondent, so the, the consumption of alcohol, sometimes drugs, was very, very big amongst us. Anger, you get very angry very quickly with people, you shout at them. Like in the humanitarian aid, you have that a lot, the people who deliver food, there is so much demand, you can't deal, so you, they start to shout at them. And then you're completely always late, you feel depressed very high expectation of oneself is also a sign of compassion fatigue. Failing to maintain a balance between empathy and objectivity. Problems managing boundaries between self and others, like we talking too much, we take too much responsibility, we cannot stop working. And like I'm doing this now, but I won't be doing it for too long because that's the problem. It's okay to do it for a while, but too long. And then to go into chronic stress, that's the problem. And then you also start to have difficulties in connecting with what is going on around you. And that's why these exercises are so important. And then maybe this you have heard before, but this is a very good reminder that never underestimate the capacity of human beings to cope with the most adverse situation. Everybody has resources. They're just too stressed to connect to them. So when you're sitting with somebody, ask them, don't give advice, just ask them, what now helps you to resist? What has helped you any other time? Or even you can ask, what would you recommend me, for example, if I were in your situation? Or how has your family survived similar situation? How has your community survived in similar situations? So they can connect to this again. But these questions cannot be answered when they just run in. You have to have a little connection and that's why the somatic exercises are so important. And sometimes I quote here Tich Nhat Hanh, who has died a few weeks ago. He said, I know you're suffering. I'm here for you with all my presence. And I put here a little dog because dogs know how to do that very well. This has been my presentation. And I ask you now to go back to how you feel right now. Has it gone worse? Has it gone better? And then think of a moment, when did the shift happen? Which exercise or which thought has helped you to feel a little bit better? And if we come up with an idea, that's your biggest resource. Thank you very much.
Yeah, Elspeth, thank you for this fantastic uh, um, input you gave us. I hope really that we will uh, find a way to uh, to give people the chance to see it again because it was full of value, uh, information and support. Thank so you thank very you much for, for time. spending time to listen to my experience. It's very important to share what we can share these days. Uh, thank you for today and thank you for coming. Mm. Mm.